You and I probably know William Eggleston because he became popular for images like this. However, color wasn't something he always photographed with. In fact, in a time where almost everyone was photographing in black and white, Eggleston was at some point no different. So we're going to be looking at today at some of his um, earlier work. We're going to be discussing some ideas, some thoughts, and of course, taking some insights for ourselves, our photography maybe. So yeah, grab a drink, make yourself comfortable, and let's go straight to another video. And the first question I had before studying some of Eggleston's black and white work was what kind of work did he do? And what could I learn from watching the differences between the color and monochromatic images, in this case, of a very accomplished photographer? Was there something he paid more attention in one than the other or took notice of? Well, the answer is that when I look at Eggleston's black and white work, I noticed that this is obviously an early stage of his career. There's a lot of photos that, to me, it's like it took them just to see what it looked like photographed. Personally, I noticed an indiscrimination that is very characteristic of his work. He photographs everything and everyone. But obviously, if some of these compositions were in color, it's safe to speculate that they could be more interesting. However, in terms of subjects, there's not any major differences between his color work and black and white work, from what I could see and have access to, of course. But there's a lot of experimentation in both, inside and outside of cars, higher and lower angles. Although I do have to say that there's more focus on people, it seems, when he photographs in black and white. So it's not a major difference, but rather a statement that his focus when capturing moments in black and white resided more on the people and experimenting around them. And so, as you know, here on the channel, I like to make educated guesses or, you know, maybe informed opinions um, that I like to pass on to you through the videos. And in today's video, that's no different. I grabbed this book actually about a month ago or so, William Eggleston's Portraits, and I had a look through the book. It really, really is an interesting book. Link to this book will be uh, down in the description if you're interested. And this book reunites um, just a different side of William Eggleston from obviously what he's popularly known for. Um, this talks about like portraits um, and it includes black and white work and color work. So different, you know, you can obviously look at it and take some insight for yourself. You know, I conclude a lot of things in terms of approaches, maybe in terms of like subject matter. So it was a very interesting book and um, it allowed me to get a, get a better idea or a better sense of Eggleston's black and white work. And from this series of portraits, I can also presume the different approaches Eggleston must have had because you can read surprise in some of the people's faces and subjects doing very normal things, which is a trait that he later became known for, for immortalizing very normal scenes, places or objects. And I know this might seem obvious, but it really is inspired to see the early work of a well-known photographer, at least to me, because it just helps me realize that photography is such a long journey and even the greatest have gone through different degrees of experimentation, preparation, different subject matter, you name it. So it always helps me put in perspective ideas like being patient with myself to keep working and putting on effort. And even if I don't share it with the world, I just know that the experience alone is a key. And so I just wanted to pass this on to you and to your photography journey. And now let's talk about some of my favorite images of Eggleston in black and white. One of my favorites is this shot of this man's back. And that's because he looks slightly down and his body is slightly tilted. To me, he has a very pensive posture, almost as if he was just lost in thought or something and unaware of the camera, which is something that the young man actually in the corner of the same frame is aware of. There's a degree of like, you know, ambiguity because we don't know what's really happening, but I don't know what's happening, but I really liked it. And it's kind of like a similar reason um, as to why I like photo number two. And photo number two is the portrait equally taken in the 1960s of this woman. And again, her expression 
suggests someone that is being taken over by some thought or overwhelming emotion. And it's just beautiful to me, her expression, her hands, the details in here. And she reminds me almost of the woman in the New York movie, a painting by Edward Hopper. And I know this is supposed to be a black and white video, I get it, but I found three images, three color images in this book that I thought I should really show you because I feel like they showcase the mastery of Eggleston in terms of finding value in the everyday and also his mastery in capturing emotions and in being candid as well, which is something that we wouldn't really like see a lot because it's not something that, um, not the type of images that we associate with Eggleston. So I wanted to further dig into another side of the photographer. And so these are the three of my favorite images of this book as well. And there's this portrait of this couple taken in their red car. And the play of colors is excellent, along with what he can suggest from the body language of the couple themselves. And the next one is a portrait of William Christenbury, who was a very deep person and equally an amazing photographer, who, if you want to know more about, you can check out the video I've done on him a few months back. And last but not the least, this self-portrait of Eggleston with his best friend T.C. Boring. Curiously enough, the man who owned the house where Eggleston captured the famous red ceiling. And I love the candidness of this self-portrait. And so for me, this is yet another reminder or lesson that I took from Eggleston's photography. An idea that I had seen with his black and white work already, but that was sealed with this last image. The idea of being frank and truthful with your photography. Basically, what I mean by this is that just do what you do. Most importantly, capture what you want to capture, your friends, your family, your travels, loneliness, happiness, whatever it is, just be truthful with your photography. Point the lens at something, not because it's just aesthetically beautiful, but do it as well for the things that are dear to you. Experiment and follow your interests and your gut. And so with that, I conclude the video for today. I really appreciate you for watching and supporting the channel. Um, and if you want to know more about William Eggleston, um, links to that will be down below. William Christenbury that we mentioned in this video, they were actually really friends. Um, and in some ways they touch each other in terms of like their... Uh, philosophies, their work philosophies, um, capturing the South and stuff. So I think that video will be very interesting if you're interested in it, you know, link will be down below. Also links to my work and other things if you want to find out. Um, you can also become now a member and we are producing some really cool videos there and the members do choose the videos that I make. So it's, it's fun and we uncover a lot of different things together. So yeah, if you're interested, if that interests you, if you'd like to support the channel, feel free to do so. If not, it really helps dropping a like, commenting and etc. because it helps from rec recommending the video. It helps me knowing that you enjoy it. And yeah, that's all for that I have to say for today. So stay safe, keep shooting, keep creating and I'm out.